My name is uh, Gerlof Langeveld. Um, I come from the Netherlands and I work for a company there called AT Computing, which does uh, consultancy for Linux and uh, gives trainings for Linux and programming languages. And I'm one of the trainers there. Um, the subject of today is uh, uh, practical use of Linux capabilities. And um, if we have a look at the traditional uh, Unix privilege scheme, um, in, in other uh, Unix implementations uh, mainly, we can see that if you are running with a user ID zero, uh, so as a super user, uh, usually root, then all the privileged actions are allowed. You can reboot the system, you can change the system clock, uh, you can all do all things. Um, if you are not having a user ID zero, then you have no privileges at all. You can do the normal things for as a normal user, but not have any privileged uh, uh, actions that you can do. So if we have a look at uh, the Linux kernel, we can see that in the Linux kernel capabilities are uh, supported, which means that every process, uh, even every thread inside the process, uh, has a distinct um, uh, set of privileges that can be enabled or disabled. Um, that means at this moment in the 3.10 uh, kernel of, uh, of uh, CentOS 7, there are 37 privileges that can be given to uh, a process. Uh, and there are some examples here, like uh, the privilege to boot the system, uh, the privilege to uh, change the system time, uh, the privilege to do the nice command with a negative uh, value, which means that you higher, uh, you increment your uh, performance by that. Um, you can do a, a change own of files. Uh, you can kill any process, not only uh, processes running under your ID. UID was the normal situation, but you can kill any process if you have the cap kill uh, privilege. Uh, or sysadmin uh, means that if you have that privilege, you can mount file systems or unmount file systems, that kind of general uh, system administrator things. Uh, you can see uh, a full uh, list of these capabilities if you look at the uh, capabilities man page, where they are all listed, uh, every capability with what you can do if you have that specific capability. Uh, what we see in the kernel code of Linux is that it always checks on capabilities and it never checks does this thread run with, uh, e, uh, with the uh, user ID zero. Uh, there's always a check, do you have this capability bit set, then you are allowed to do this special action. Uh, still, if a process is running with uh, UID zero, all the capabilities are set. Yeah, that's the default to make it uh, uh, compatible with, uh, with the old uh, Unix uh, privilege scheme. So how can I see which capabilities are set for a thread or a process? Um, we all know there's a slash proc file system and underneath you can find the, the PIDs of the running processes. Uh, in this case, I take uh, in this example the uh, PID of my running uh, shell. And underneath, there is a task sub uh, directory again with the um, threads underneath, the thread numbers underneath. And if I have a sing single threaded uh, shell, then I can use my PID for the process number, but also for the thread number. And underneath, we'll find a, um, a file which is called status. And in that status file, we can see five um, capability sets. Um, the the most important of that is the effective capabilities. And that's where the kernel looks at if your process is doing a, a specific thing or your threat is doing a specific thing, are you allowed to do that uh, specific, uh, specific action? Yeah, and you can see here a normal user process has all the effective capabilities switched off. They are all zeros, these bits. This is, by the way, a hexadecimal representation of the, of the bits of the capabilities. And um, so effective uh, capabilities are verified all the time. Furthermore, we see another bit list, which is called the permitted capabilities within the process administration. And that means even if you have no effective capabilities, if you have them in the permitted capabilities, you can always make them effective as a process. So there are special system calls that allow you to make a permitted um, uh, capability effective. 
If you also, via system calls, wipe away as a programmer your permitted capabilities, uh, there's no chance that you get them uh, effective again. Yeah, so once destroying the uh, permitted capability means you cannot do, uh, uh, make them effective. No. Well, for the um, completeness, you can also see the inheritable and ambient uh, capabilities, but I'm not going to discuss them now. I will discuss them uh, one by one in a later slide. Furthermore, you will find the bounding capabilities, and that is really the limiting superset. Uh, you can ha not have any bit in all the other lists if uh, they are not in the bounding list. Yeah, so if you shrink the bounding list, that also shrinks all the other lists. lists. Usually the bounding list is uh, having all the uh, capabilities uh, as a possibility. Well, for this um, presentation, I made a, a small uh, program not to have a look all the time at the slash prop file system. It's just a small uh, Python program, which I called uh, Cap Show, and I will give you some um, uh, examples of, of processes that are running at the moment. Uh, if I have a look at process one at this moment, then I can see, sorry, I should have the flag set, then I can see that process one, uh, system D, is having all the effective capabilities, all the permitted capabilities, and all the bound capabilities set. Yeah, and this is due to the fact that also process one is running as effective user ID zero. It has all the capabilities set. Um, if I look at my own shell um, and I use my own uh, process ID, then I can see I'm running a shell now as a super user. Um, so I can uh, also see that that gives me all the uh, effective and permitted uh, capabilities. Uh, if I go to another window where I'm logged in as a normal user and I run capshow uh, minus LP uh, for the current process here, uh, then you can see this is, uh, the capabil these are the capability lists of uh, normal processes, yeah, not running as a, a root uh, user. You still have all the bound uh, bits set, but not the other bits. Um, if I look, for instance, on uh, CentOS 7 at the process um, Groni, then I can see it runs with uh, 4308 as a PID. And if I do a cap show on that one, um, we will see that it has limited capabilities. It still runs under UID 0, uh, but it has limited capabilities. Just two bits are set. Uh, in the effective and permitted. Well, if you want to, uh, to make them human readable, you can give the minus H uh, flag with this uh, program. And then it really translates the bits into uh, the capabilities that are set for Groni. And you can see it only has the NetBind servers capability and the SysTime uh, capability. Uh, of course, Groni should uh, be able to, to modify the system clock. That's why he needs the sys underscore time capability. And he needs to open a port which is lower than 1024. And that's why he needs the NetBind service capability. Yeah, and he doesn't need further capabilities. Yeah, why should you give it more capabilities? Uh, why should you give uh, Gone uh, a sys boot capability or whatever? By the way, with this program, uh, CapShow, um, you can also show all the capabilities uh, of all the processes if you just uh, do it without a PID. Yeah, like this, you can see all the processes in, uh, in a row. Which one? <laughs> System D journal, demon. It also has not all the capabilities, apparently. Yeah, it's bound by uh, uh, a limited number of capabilities. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, so um, uh, under uh, the, the picture below shows a representation of uh, all the capability sets, the five of them, and we will see that a uh, uh, number of times more. 
So um, there are two kind of application programs, uh, applications that are capability aware and capability unaware. Uh, capability unaware means that the application doesn't do any system call to modify its capabilities. So capability unaware applications rely on the fact that they get the proper setting of the effective capabilities and they can just do their job and do their special, uh, uh, use their special privileges. Uh, there are also capability aware processes and they can manipulate their capabilities and they know how to manipulate their capabilities. So they can uh, uh, also change the effective capabilities to zero if at this moment they don't need any capabilities. As long as they have permitted capabilities, they can always bring back their effective capabilities. But they can also limit their permitted capabilities uh, if they just don't need uh, capabilities. Suppose that the process is uh, started with effective user ID zero, it gets all the capabilities, but it, the process doesn't want to have all the capabilities. Uh, then it can also shrink uh, the, the permitted capabilities and by that the effective capabilities again. Okay. So two types of processes. I'll come back to that uh, later on uh, on a later slide. Well, what is very important um, uh, of the for the capabilities is uh, if we have a look at uh, process management, we probably know that if you want to have a new process, that uh, a new process is always created via the system called fork. Yeah, and that means that a current process clones itself into a new process, a child process, which will be an identical copy of the parent process. Um, if we see in this picture uh, the process administration at the right and uh, the yellow part uh, is, is the code and the data and the stack uh, in memory, uh, then in that process administration, that pink part, that are the capabilities. And during a fork system call, uh, the capabilities are copied one to one to the child process. So during the fork system call, there are no modifications on the, on the capability sets. Yeah? Just copied one by one. But usually a child process is going to load another process, uh, another program uh, executable file into the process by the exec system call. And there a lot of changes are made to the um, capability sets in the process. So beware that with the exec system call, uh, the same process is uh, still running with the same PID and the same open files and the same signal handling and all that kind of things which is in the process administration. But via an exec system call, uh, we load in new code and data from an executable file. That's what happens, but it's still the same process. Yeah, the same process is going to run another program, another executable file. And there, things will change in the capability sets of the process, and we will see that later on. Yeah, by the way, at the end of the program load during the exec uh, system call, uh, there is a check again, does this process run under UID zero? then all the capability bits are set again in the permitted uh, and in the effective set. Yeah, so still to maintain the old scheme. So if we have a look at the transition, what happens uh, during the exec system call, and these are the transitions of the capabilities, and mind uh, that we find the threat administration in the process on the top, but the threat administration uh, at the bottom is the same threat. Yeah, it's not a new process, it's the same threat, but what we see here are the transitions of the capability sets during the exec system call, where we load a new program. And that new program is represented by the executable file, the, the green thing here, and we can see what happens with these capability sets during an exec. And this is an exec of an unprivileged program file. Uh, unprivileged means no special capability sets on the program because that's what we will see later on, that also on an executable file you can set privileges. But this is a, just a normal executable file like the ls command or the vim command or whatever. So suppose that this is a normal process where the, all the, the bits, the capability sets are set to zeros, all the bits are zero. 
uh, then if uh, we exec another program file in the process, then also after exec, all the bits sets will be zero. Yeah, nothing will change there. But suppose that we have a process that currently has certain permitted uh, capabilities and effective capabilities, um, then still uh, what we can see during the transfer, during the transition uh, with loading a new program, we can see that only the ambient, and that is what we didn't uh, discuss yet, the ambient capabilities will be transferred to the, uh, the uh, during the, the exec, and the ambient will be after the exec, the new permitted and the new uh, effective capabilities. So if we have a process that has effective capabilities and permitted capabilities, but all the ambient capabilities are zero, then over the exec, also the eff uh, effective and permitted become zero. Yeah, that's the normal situation. Uh, the, no the new program will not get the same effective uh, capabilities. But if a process manages to get ambient bits set, these ambient bits will later on, after loading the new program, will be the new effective and permitted uh, capabilities. So in that way, um, a program that lo loads an, a new program in the process can also transfer uh, certain capabilities to the new program. We will see an uh, example of that in a minute when we have a look at system D, how this system D manages the capabil capabilities. So I will have a look at the uh, three use cases of capabilities and mainly modifying capabilities. We will have a look at system D. We will have a look at Docker, how it uh, manages capabilities, and we will have a look at uh, executable files, what we can do with capabilities there. First of all, let's have a look at system D. System D itself, process one, uh, runs with user ID zero, that means that it has all the effective capabilities and permitted capabilities. We saw an example of that earlier. And by default, these are inherited by child processors. So if you start services from uh, system D, they also get uh, effective user ID zero and they get all the capabilities set. Um, that's the default situation that you can also see in the table. And I will show you an example of that. Uh, suppose in, I'm uh, here in the user lib system D system directory, and there I have um, a service file that contains this information. Uh, I can see that there's a forking service, and the service which is started is uh, this program here, cap1d. Um, and that program uh, I'll find in this directory uh, underneath. And if I have a look, it's just a small uh, piece of C code. Uh, don't worry, it's not too complicated. Um, what I can see here is that in the C code, um, the program forks itself yeah, into a child process. And if it comes out of the fork with uh, uh, the value zero, then it execs the sleep command. That's my service, just as an example. Uh, it, it starts sleep as a service for sleeping for an hour. Uh, the parent process continues here and stops. And you can see that I specified a forking uh, service here. So the parent should also stop. Otherwise, system CTL start will not finish. Yeah, it's waiting for the parent to stop. So the parent starts a child process and, and uh, starts sleep inside. And the parent itself stops. So if I run this service here, Um, cap demo one, um, and I'm looking now uh, for that sleep process, and I can do that by saying cap uh, show minus l uh, pipe grab sleep. Ah, there are two sleeps. Uh, which one is it? Well, doesn't matter in this case because uh, they both have all the uh, uh, the full. Um, capability set for permitted and uh, effective. Yeah? So this is the normal situation. If you start a service, 
by system D, it gets all the capabilities. Okay, let's um, uh, stop that one uh, again. That also removes the sleep process. Uh, let's have a look at another example. Um, Cap demo two, dot servers. Uh, the only modification that we see here is that now I started under a normal user, yeah, no longer under root. So user is, is specified now in the service file. Um, this, this program is exactly the same as the program that we still uh, see underneath. Yeah. So if I start this one, cap demo two, and I'm looking again for the sleep processes, then I can see that now the sleep process, and it's uh, definitely the second one, uh, that gets no uh, capabilities. Yeah? So if you start a, a process under a normal user, it gets no capabilities at all. But often you want to have your service to, to run with a few capabilities. Yeah? And that's what we can see in, uh, in the next example. So first uh, stop this one. If I have a look at cap demo three, then I can see again under a normal user ID, but now ambient uh, capabilities is specified. And that's a special keyword of systemd in the services file, where I can specify the ambient capabilities and I want to give the, the nice capability yeah, in this case. And I'm starting cap3.d, and if you have a look at cap3.d uh, as a process, there you can see that after the fork, I want my, to lower my nice value for the child process so that sleep uh, runs with a higher uh, priority. Um, so I need that Kips, CAPS is uh, nice uh, capability for that. So suppose that I'm running this uh, process, this service. Where is it? Um, and I'm looking again for the sleep. Then I can see that, uh, first of all, the ambient capability was set to that one bit, which is that eight. Uh, be convinced that is the nice uh, capability. And over the exec, while executing the sleep, there it also became the new permitted and the new effective capability. Yeah, so this is the ambient that we saw uh, two slides ago. Here, that the ambient is transferred uh, uh, during the exec, and that makes the new permitted and the new effective capability. Yeah. And my process is running under a normal user ID, but it has one specific uh, privilege, yeah. which is uh, the good thing. So that's what you can do with the ambient capability here in this list. Um, a last example that I want to show you here is the example of, uh, let's first stop, stop this again, not to confuse things. Um, one last example is what I want to show you with cap demo five. Uh, what you can see here is that I don't use uh, another user, so the new process is going to run uh, under UID zero, but I specify here the capability bounding set, so I can also modify the bounding set of a process, and I only have in the bounding set caps is nice. That means even if the process runs with UID zero, and it should get all the effective capabilities and permitted capabilities, it is bound by the bounding set which I'm influencing here with this parameter. So if I run this um, surface and I'm looking again for the sleeps, uh, then I can see only that bit eight is set in the bounding set, which is the last uh, bit list. And because that's in the bounding set, it bounds all the other uh, bit lists as well. Yeah, so even if you are running with user ID zero, which this sleep does, still you can limit the, the bits in the effective and permitted lists by influencing the bounding. Yeah, so there are two parameters that you can specify for system D in a service. 
and that is the, uh, the ambient capabilities and the uh, capability bounding set. Another use case of uh, capabilities is Docker. Um, if you, and I will do that uh, with, uh, with the slides as an example. If you do a Docker run, and I run it with the minus IT, which means interactively, and I want, don't want to uh, reserve the, uh, uh, the uh, I w don't want to keep the, the image after run, and I run the CentOS uh, image here. What you can see then is that a shell is started in the, as a uh, container. And if in that container I try to do uh, a nice minus N minus 20 for a process, uh, so I want to run it with a higher priority, then I get permission denied. Well, why is that? Uh, if we have a look here in the cap show output uh, for process 11652, which is apparently the process ID of the bash running as inside the container, yeah, which is after all also a native process, uh, then I can see that uh, if you run a normal container, that process in the container is running with effective user ID zero, but it doesn't get all the capabilities. Uh, you see that the capabilities are bound here. It's not one with all, all Fs, but it's a, a limited capability set that you get. And if I use on that same process the minus H option, you can see that only these capabilities are in the act effective list and in the permitted list and so on. Yeah, so that means there is no nice capability by default given to your processes in a container, and that's why it's not, not possible inside the container to use the nice command. You can see in the default uh, capabilities of Docker that there is a change own uh, capability given by default, and that's why in the container I can do change own one, two, three, four on the, well, etc services file and change the ownership of that file. Yeah, so that are the default Docker um, capabilities that a process gets. Um, what you can do is that in, uh, in Docker you can uh, also drop capabilities or you can add even other uh, capabilities. And that's what you do with docker run minus minus cap add and minus minus cap drop. drop. And there you can specify one or more uh, capabilities to be added. Um, if we have a look at an example of that, that's what I do here in the example. Um, I run Docker again, an interactive uh, bash session, but now I say add the sysnice capability and drop the change own capability uh, and still run the image of CentOS. Then you can see that inside the uh, uh, Docker container, I cannot do a change own anymore, but I can do a nice uh, minus N minus 20 now and uh, increment the uh, priority of that sleep process. And again, that uh, bash which is running inside the container has a certain PID, and if I check the, uh, the capabilities on that, I can see it has no change own anymore, uh, but it has now a sysnice, uh, which is added to it. I can also see that that sleep process which is started now, uh, it also can be found as a native process on the, uh, on the normal machine, and you can see that it runs with a, a minus 20. Nice value now. Yeah. Another thing that influences the capabilities for Docker is the minus minus user uh, option that you can give. Uh, you can run your process inside the Docker con uh, container uh, with another username instead of root, yeah, or another user ID. Uh, at that moment, it drops all the capabilities. So then you would see that the process in the container has no capabilities anymore. And you can also not use cap add to give it some capabilities. If you start it as a normal user, then it has no capabilities at all. Okay, that's for Docker. Um, a last use case that I want to mention 
is uh, running executable files. Uh, in the traditional situation, um, we often use the set UID bit uh, and give uh, the, the file, the executable file, the ownership of root. Yes, you set UID root programs. And if you look um, in CentOS 6 and also in other uh, modern uh, distributions that we see nowadays, for instance, the command ping, which is the executable slash bin slash ping, uh, has the set UID bit set and it has the ownership of root. And that means that at the moment that you start ping as a normal user, then during the exec system call, uh, if the set UID bit is set, the, own, the root user will be the effective user inside the process. So that means that really the process runs as root, even if you started it as a normal user. That also means that all the capabilities are given. Uh, but ping doesn't need all the capabilities, so why should you give it all the capabilities? And that's why you can also manipulate with the capabilities of program files, yeah? not of processes that we talked so far, but you can modify the capabilities of program files. Inside a program file, an executable file, there is also an inheritable set, there is a permitted set, and there is no effective set, but there is an effective bit that you can see there. Well, with the inheritable set, you can reduce the uh, new permitted set of a thread after an exec, and with the permitted set, you can extend the new permitted set of a thread after exec. And that sounds a bit, um, well, difficult maybe at this moment, but I will show you in a picture how that works uh, in a minute. So what you can see in uh, CentOS 7, for instance, is that the ping command, uh, executable file, uh, has no set UID bit anymore. But if you do an ls minus L, you only see that the name is colored, which means there's something special about this executable file, but it's not anymore uh, set UID root. Yeah, and uh, this is a file on which capabilities, file capabilities have been set. And they influence the process at the moment that you are loading this, this program file. So let's have a look how that works. So here we are talking about, again about the exec system call. We can see the capabilities uh, list, uh, cap capabilities before the exec and what happens during the exec, yeah, again underneath. So, and here the inheritable list is important. You have seen earlier the ambient list, but here the uh, inheritable list is important. So if I load that ping process, which has special capabilities on the executable file, then I can see during the load that the inheritable set of the process is going to be the permitted set after the exec, yeah, after the new program has been loaded. That's the initial permitted set. But then we can see in step two, that what the inheritable bits are in the executable file, uh, they will be ended, yeah, logical bitwise end, with what is in the permitted list. Well, usually uh, you can find that the inheritable bits in the executable file are all zeros. So if you end that with the inheritable set that have been taken over in the, the permitted set, uh, then you wipe everything, yeah, if it's all zeros with a logical bitwise end. So in that, in that respect, you reduce all the bits that are set so far. But in step three, um, the permitted bits inside the executable will be added again to the permitted bits in the process. Yeah, so what is mostly used in executable files are permitted bits. And there you also permit those bits inside the permitted list of the, of the thread, of the process. Yeah. And then the effective is not a list, it's just a bit. And if that bit is set, it means that automatically during the exec, the permitted bits will be taken over as effective bits. And that's specifically um, important for unaware applications. 
Yeah, because they do not uh, take permitted bits themselves over in the effective bits. They should already have been prepared and uh, unaware applications just yeah, use the effective bits. Yeah, so what you see usually is that the uh, um, permitted bits and maybe the, ac uh, the effective bit is, uh, is set in the executable file. So how can I see uh, what the settings are on the executable file? There is, a, a, again, that ping command that we see in CentOS 7, uh, which doesn't have the set UID bit. Uh, we can do a get cap command on that. And then we see that this file has the capnet admin and the capnet raw bits set. Yeah, and we see the plus p, which means in the permitted uh, list of the executable file. So that means that if I run the ping command, that by these permissions, they are also taken in the permitted uh, list of the process. And you can make... Um, certain commands yourself uh, that way that you give certain capabilities. Um, suppose that you copy the, the nice command and you copy it to another command called not nice. Um, and after that, with the set cap command, you set the sys nice uh, in the permitted list of that uh, executable file. And you also set the effective bit yeah, by spe on that file then you allow normal users to run their processes with a higher priority, with a lower nice. Yeah? Now everybody who has uh, execute access on that not nice command can also use that command to, uh, to increment the uh, priority of your process. So what is not allowed with the nice command still is to lower as a normal user your priority but I can now, as a normal user, use the not nice command and lower my priority because the capabilities are set on the executable file. Yeah, and here, uh, nice is not um, capability aware, and that's why I also have to set that E bit. You can see in the example of ping that ping is uh, capability aware. Uh, there, the E bit is not set, we only set the certain permissions in the permitted list of the executable file. Yeah, and we can see that uh, ping is capability aware um, by doing a, a small S trace on ping. Suppose that I uh, run ping and I am a root user in this example, then ping gets all the capabilities, yeah, effective and permitted again. But it doesn't want to have all the capabilities. So by itself, it uses the system call cap set. And in the system call cap set, you can specify the effective capabilities, the permitted capabilities, and the inheritable capabilities. And you can see that um, ping by itself removes all the effective capabilities. It only holds the permitted capabilities, cap, net admin, and net role and it also removes all the inheritable capabilities. And at the moment that ping is going to do uh, a special thing, then you can see that it takes, again, the ca capnet raw capability as an effective capability at that moment. Then it opens a raw socket, and then it gets rid of that uh, special capability as effective capability again. Yeah, and um, that's also uh, what you do with this capability. You are able to open a raw socket, so not a TCP or UDP socket, but directly a socket to the IP layer, for which you should have special capabilities. Yeah? Because Ping wants to send ICMP uh, echo requests to the other side. And once that socket is opened, and that has succeeded, then you can drop that capability again as an effective capability because now it's already opened and you can use it and keep using it as a process. Yeah, so ping in CentOS 7 is capability aware and it doesn't need the EBIT uh, because it can manage to make the permitted capabilities effective by itself. Okay, as a last example, um, 
I want to show you uh, the ATOP uh, program output. Um, I'm the developer of ATOP, and uh, ATOP always runs with setuid root, yeah, because it needs special pri uh, privileges for certain things. Uh, one of the things that ATOP does is that it switches on process accounting in the kernel. Well, you can only do that if you have special privileges for that. Uh, another thing that it does is that it reads the file slash proc slash pid slash io. And to read that specific file, uh, the IO statistics of processes, uh, you need to have uh, special privileges for that. So that's until now, out of runs with setuid root to do that. But in fact, also out of gets too many privileges by that, and you only want to have the privileges that are really needed. So I figured out for out of what kind of special privileges are needed. And, um, well, to switch on process accounting, to switch it on, you need sysact. Uh, the accounting file is in a special uh, directory. Uh, for that purpose, you can set doc override. By the way, if you have that uh, privilege, then you may, uh, then all the read, write, execute permissions are ignored, yeah, which is the way for root. And also by having that specific uh, privilege, I can access, modify, read any file in the file system. Um, so it's a bit a dangerous uh, capability. Um, ATOP, as a performance monitor, also wants to run on a higher priority for CPU. And so it needs the SysNice. It also locks itself into memory, not to be swapped out, because you want to, to analyze a situation where the system is swapping. And then you do not want the an analysis tool to be swapped out by itself. So that's why I also need IPC lock and sys resource capabilities. Yeah, furthermore, uh, ATOP also uh, reads the perf counters, um, instructions per cycle on the CPU. It needs the sysadmin uh, capability for that. It also reads that proc pit IO file, and it needs uh, duck read search and sys ptrace capabilities for that. Um, most of these capabilities I have from the man page capabilities yeah, that I mentioned at the, at the beginning. Um, but for mainly that last capability, I really had to read the kernel source. Uh, what capability do I need for that proc pit IO file? Yeah, so altogether, what I can do now is set cup, and then that whole range of capabilities that I need is PE, because at this moment, ATOP is not capability aware, uh, and set that on the executable of ATOP. Yeah, and then you can get rid of the set UID root uh, privileges, as an example. Right, this uh, was what I want to tell about capabilities. Are there questions? You're welcome. Yeah. Quite a lot of these wars and stuff get the IDP complaints stopped. And some of these general IDPs, you get stopped. Does that stop? Do you have everything I need in one command, so I don't need to have the word stop anymore? Thank you. Great, thank you very much. Are capabilities global or are they impacted by namespaces? Uh, they are not affected by namespaces. They are just in the threat administration in the task structure of the kernel. And um, yeah. So if I set a capability on a pop and you know, enter any namespace where I do not have, uh, that will process the dot. Yes. Um, if you have a look at the Docker examples, where I gave the cup add to add the nice uh, capability to my Docker container and the processes running in there, 
uh, I can see these same capabilities when I run on the normal system on which the container runs. And also with that improved NICE that can be given to the processes in the Docker container will certainly influence the performance of my system on which the container runs. No, it never ignores the bounding set. That's overruling all the, all the sets. Yeah, so if you start still having a, a, a process running under F, uh, user ID zero, but with a limited bounding set, it can never get uh, other permissions than are in the bounding set. No, it's in the inode. It's an extension of the inode that contains the capabilities for the executable file. Okay, thank yeah. you. Okay. Other questions? Uh, is, this, <laughs> is this related? To, are you familiar with the Capsicum project? Nope. Okay, all right, then. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> okay, thanks very much for listening. Thank you very much.